Power creep. It's a phrase that's been thrown around quite a lot over the years in Overwatch, from all the issues caused by the release of Brigitte in Overwatch 1 during the GOAT meta, right up to today where heroes like Winston are receiving buffs that seem interesting but aren't necessarily what the hero needs. I'll start by saying it's a valid concern to have, especially given how heroes like Genji have been given buffs in the past, which has then seen their pick rate and win rate skyrocket, which just forces the devs into gutting the strengths from his kit and leaving him in an actually slightly worse off position than he was originally in. Looking at the Winston buff from Season 8, for example, his Tesla cannon now ignores the 30% damage resistance from armor. So yeah, it's an interesting method of tackling a change to his kit that arguably he probably needed. But it's also one that might send Winston into becoming one of, if maybe even the best tank in the future. His ability to dive onto someone like a Brigitte, for example, with his new buff to ignore armor, means she'll now fall just as easily in the backline as someone like Anna or Zenyatta. For those of you who are familiar with League of Legends, Winston basically has true damage now. The Season 8 balance patch also basically ignored Sigma and Bastion, two heroes that have only seen increasing popularity ever since the latter got a handful of buffs at the start of Season 6, short of an arguably minor nerf to Sigma's barrier in Season 8. Winston won't necessarily be an auto-pick with the current state of the Sigma and Bastion comp, but if Bastion gets a nerf in the future, which is possible, he'll be running rampant. Instead of nerfing the heroes that are currently seen as issues by a larger part of the community, including pro players, other heroes have been buffed in response to it, which is where several issues begin. And that is the start of power creep. One of the biggest problems in Overwatch 2 at the moment is how fights tend to function. Things either die so fast that you can't react to it, or the damage you deal is completely healed up in what feels like a fraction of a second. Both the damage and healing numbers are way too high, and as a result, the game has been an extremely volatile state for quite a while, where one small buff or nerf to a hero is the difference between them being a meta pick or next to useless. Heroes like Baptiste are responsible for the insane amount of healing in games, with abilities like Regenerative Burst giving an instant 40 health, or 80 if below half HP, and 40 health over time, as well as his Immortality Field, which keeps teammates from dying, sets them at 25% health, all while on a 25 second cooldown. Now, if they don't want to change the numbers associated with these abilities, then fine, but at the very least, they need to have larger cooldowns to reduce the amount of time they're available. Combine Bap's ridiculous burst healing with the amount of damage that he can do, and he's rivaling Soldier 76 as a DPS while also having the kit to keep himself and his team alive. It's why Bap is considered one of the strongest heroes in the game, and he's been able to stay in this state for quite a while. And when you look at Soldier 76, he's quite far on the opposite end of things. He's been in an odd state because of how much a single point of damage changes the entire state of the hero. Back in Overwatch 1, his primary fire was changed from 17 damage per bullet up to 20, which, understandably, made his pick rate grow much higher. But when he had his damage decreased to 19 per bullet, his pick rate and his win rate just didn't match up. Now in Overwatch 2, 19 is what his damage per bullet is currently set at, and it feels fair to consider him to be balanced. But if it ever goes up by that one damage per tick, like he was at the start of the beta, you're going to start seeing him everywhere. That shouldn't really be happening with such small number changes, and that's what I'm talking about when I say Overwatch is in a volatile state right now. Someone can have their primary weapon damage increased by a single point, and it's the difference between them being a must pick or a niche comfort pick. And the game can't really function as long as that's the case. Looking back towards Baptiste, you've got to look at his cooldowns. Immortality Field needs to either have the cooldown numbers looked at, or the overall properties of the ability need to be changed for the health of the game. Immortality Field is on a 25 second cooldown and can prevent people dying from a distance, whereas you look at someone like Mercy with her Resurrect that many people considered broken for a long time, and that's on a 30 second cooldown, but she needs to actively put herself into potential danger in order to have an impact. If she's successful with the res, she waits 30 seconds for another. If she fails with it, the team lose another player. So why should heroes like Bap and Kiriko be able to keep their distance while preventing a teammate from being eliminated? while on a shorter cooldown than the hero who has to put herself in the firing line. It's not all cooldowns, obviously, other abilities need to have their numbers adjusted in order to reduce their strength, while making sure that they have the same frequency at least to keep the game turning over. Abilities like Anna's Biotic Grenade, Sigma's Experimental Barrier and Sojourn's Power Slide. These are all vital parts of their kit and they're all considered to be pretty strong, especially when compared to what other heroes can do within their same role. Now fair enough, Season 8 made changes to the Experimental Barrier, but more needs to be done. 
Lead hero designer Alec Dawson has come out recently and spoken about how there will actually be some fundamental changes to the game at the start of 2024, so that being the start of season 9 at the earliest, in order to make some things feel vastly different, looking particularly towards some of the burst damage and the reliance on burst healing that's currently in the game. He provided some examples which all essentially boiled down to getting hit by crowd control, so a stun, leading to a very quick and very painful death sentence with the amount of damage that can be coming towards you at any given time in a match. And let's face it, the game would look very different without that reliance on heavy burst damage and burst healing. He also talked about how the current DPS row passive that gives you a faster reload speed after earning an elimination would be looked at to make it become more meaningful. Pretty valid considering that rarely do you notice the buff when you have it, but what could this be changed to? An increase to movement speed, maybe? Or a reduction in cooldown duration to really put the emphasis on cooldown management? For now, we'll have to wait and see, but it's clear that Overwatch 2 can't continue in the state that it's currently in, because power creep is real and something needs to be done to stop it. So what are your thoughts on the current state of heroes and power creep in Overwatch 2? Is this the most volatile state the game has ever been in? Let us know down in the comments below, and while we have you here with us at GG Recon, check out these videos here.